In every major release of Python for the last few years, error messages have become significantly better. And this trend continues in Python 3.14. Not only have a whole heap of error messages improved in all sorts of different circumstances, but errors are now easier to catch and it's now harder to swallow errors accidentally in particular circumstances. So in this video, I'm going to be walking through the general error message improvements, but I'm also going to be showing off the two peps that helped improve the error system further. Of course, if you find the video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. But with all that out of the way, let's see what's new in Python's error system. Uh, before we talk about those two things, I do want to quickly run through the things in the PEP. I'm not going to show examples of these because I want to show um, or save the demo time for the PEPs themselves. But the error messages, uh, it can now detect if you've misspelled keywords, um, which you would think is a really simple thing, but I was listening to the Core.py podcast and it really isn't a simple thing to do that. Um, so that is quite impressive to do. Uh, we then also have um, some... Uh, improved error messages while unpacking. Uh, so before it didn't really print the number of received elements um, all the time. So this bit at the end, uh, but now it prints it in more situations, which is nice. It's able to detect if an elif was used after an else. Uh, it's able to detect if a statement is used in a conditional expression. If um, strings are perhaps unintentionally terminated when they shouldn't have been, which is something I've definitely run into before. Um, so this would be <laughs> a nice one to have. When you have incompatible string prefixes, it will tell you which prefixes are incompatible, which is just a nice thing to have. And then there are improved error messages when using as with incompatible uh, targets, such as if you try and slice them, which is always good to have too. Um, so a lot of things I haven't run into personally, but I imagine a number of people have, otherwise they wouldn't have made these changes. So that's really nice to see. Uh, but what I really want to focus this video on are the two PEPs themselves. So PEP 758 and PEP 765. So 758, if we start making a thing, is for no bracket. Well, I'm going to call this no brackets exceptions. It's a bit more complicated than that. Uh, but basically, it's not much more complicated though. Uh, you can now catch multiple exceptions without having to use brackets. So let's say we have this function uh, and it takes an x, which is just an int, uh, and it's, it's well, it will never return, but let's say it returns none just for simplicity. And if we do if x equals one, something happens and it raises a value error. Um, if it's two, something happens and it raises a name error. Uh, otherwise it will return, I don't know what button I've hit there, raise not implemented error as an example so this is a particularly poorly programmed function at the moment um, if we wanted to try and catch all these exceptions we could do try func and then we'll just give it something and then before if we wanted to catch multiple exceptions we would have to do value error name error and not implemented error in brackets like this and we could say print um, caught exception, fantastic. Um, now, after this pep, you can get rid of these brackets and PyLint sure as hell isn't gonna like it or PyLance isn't gonna like it because it hasn't been updated. I'm recording this on the same day as the PyRepl syntax highlighting video. So this will probably be fixed by the time you see this, but I promise you this is valid syntax. And if we were to, um, if you were to run this now, what is going on in here? <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, if we do pi, if we activate this environment, that would help. Pi, no brackets, exceptions. It's called the exception just fine. The only slight problem is you can't actually catch them with a name. So if you wanted to catch all these exceptions as exception, you still can't do that. Um, and it has to be in brackets. So it really is just swallowing or at least logging multiple exceptions at once. So its usage is a little bit limited, but I did want to show it off anyway, um, because I know people will probably like this change quite a bit. The other thing that I want to talk about today is PEP 765, uh, which uh, raises a warning when you use a break, continue, or finally, or sorry, return statement within a finally block where a try and accept block are already present. So to show this off, I've already got this double function here, which just takes a, uh, a number, if it's not an int, it throws a type error. If the number is less than zero, it throws a value error. It's just kind of a, a generic implementation. And let's say we were to have a function which then called that. 
Um, so say you do try and then double, say one, and then print uh, success like that. And then we did accept type error as exe and then print just type error. Um, well, just caught. <laughs> That'll do. And we return one. And then finally, we return zero. Uh, so this one and zero are kind of representing exit codes uh, for programs. So if I were to do an if name equals main oops, down here, and is no, I keep hitting that button. I don't know what that, still don't know what that button is. Uh, exit code equals main like that. So just running the function and then print uh, program. Oh God, if I could actually type exited with code exit code like that. So we can see what's going on. So you have this double function. We then have this main function that we're just using to run the double function, but we're also doing some exception handling. Uh, and then finally we return zero. Now pylance will actually tell us what's wrong uh, with this pattern as will some other uh, linters. Let's say a return cannot be used inside a finally block. And the reason for that is if I were to run it like this, um, everything should work perfectly fine because it prints the success and then program exited with zero. If I were to do, um, say try and double hello, uh, we would get the error handling here, but we'd notice that it still says the program exited with code zero, even though we type return one here. And this is because it goes into here, it fails here, so it actually catches the exception. It runs uh, the exception handling, so all the exception handling will be done. It gets this return and thinks, right, okay, well, I still have this finally to do. And then in this finally, we return zero um, to say that everything was fine after we do this. And I hope not many people would make that mistake, but I think it's a good illustrative example because when this happens, it just exits out of the block and it doesn't go back to return this. So it always returns zero. More worryingly, if we were to do double negative one, and if you remember up here, if it x equals zero, we'll raise a value error. We're not actually handling a value error at all. And the whole exception is just completely swallowed. So chances are we probably didn't want to do that. And this is the problem with this pattern that Python is trying to resolve. So if we enable the virtual environment and we just run that again, we'll actually get a warning now, a syntax warning, return in a finally block. And the same thing will happen if you put a break or a continue in. So it won't do it um, if you say have like for this in range to pretend that's a range. <laughs> if you do something like this, it wouldn't actually come up with an error at all, um, regardless of if you had it as a break or continue, which I think is a bit strange and I can't see a rationale for why that's the case, but there you go. Um, this was actually proposed or this warning was actually proposed earlier, all the way back for Python 3.8 but was rejected in that form. And instead um, it was to be considered a programming style issue, which I quite like the wording of. It's a polite way of saying it's a skill issue really. Um, and that it would become a pep eight rule, which linters then picked up as we can see uh, Pylance does. If I were to run rough um, check return finally, we'll see that it doesn't actually, uh, oh, it's throwing up a different error because I'm not using that. No, it doesn't actually find a problem with this code in its default state. If we were to do select sim 107, it would then find it, but sim rules aren't enabled by default in rough, meaning this could get missed. And this combined with the fact that this behavior is never really desirable is why Python is now taking it into its own hands and emitting a warning. Now, if you did actually want to swallow exceptions, you could just do accept exception pass, or you could use context libs suppress function. And those are a little bit more intentional and also a little clearer about what they're trying to do. The pep doesn't make it clear when, or indeed if this will ever become an error, it's just left completely open Again, I'm not really sure why. If it was me, I probably would have uh, put it in line with Python's deprecation policy and said, right, from Python 3.16, this is no longer a thing. But I'm sure there were probably good reasons.
But yeah, that's the general rundown of everything that's changed in Python's error system in Python 3.14. If you have any questions about what you've seen, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you want to see more of what I've done in Python 3.14, so that includes uh, template strings video as well as PyRepl syntax highlighting, and of course the overview of like everything that's changing, um, then you can look at the Python 3.14 playlist that is linked in the end cards. I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.